So Jesus says, follow me. I will send you. I will make you. Because we say the church, the word ecclesia, the church in the Greek is ecclesia. Ecclesia means the called out ones who have been called to. It is not enough to be called out and you don't know why you have been called in this kingdom. Because he calls us out of darkness into light in order to do something. Now, mito for mission means the sending. So God calls us in order to send us. Abraham, we read uh, in the book of Genesis, Abraham, come out of your people, come out of your family, come out of your kindred, come out of the same tongue that you speak, and I will send you, I will show you a land where I'm calling you to. So God calls us from our familiar from the things that we are used to, from the friends that we have, from the family that we have, and he calls us out so that he sends us into a land so that we can reveal who he is through us. And friends, this is the primary call. If we didn't tell you when you repented, sorry that we didn't tell you, but this is the reason why you are a child of God. We repent that we didn't tell you uh, in good time. That you have been called by God so that people will see God through you and you can declare God wherever you are. When you go to school, he wants people to know that he is alive through you. That's your mission. Okay. Then, did, didn't we read uh, Joshua chapter 4, verse 23 to 24? He says to Joshua, I dried up the river before you. And all the people went through the river. And the river did not come before the last one came out of the river to wash them away. You saw the miracle. I kept the river dry until you came to a land that was dry. And that tells Joshua to say, no matter what you go through, if you are going through a river that's so dangerous, God will make sure that even your children come out, your grandchildren come out until they get to the other end. Hallelujah. To prove to you that I am God so that the whole world will know. That she could have perished, we don't know how she made it. We don't know how he was going to come out, but hey, look, he's still standing. That people will know. The bottom line of everything is God wants people to see and to know through the church. We read 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 46. That Goliath came tumbling down and the head was cut off. Right? So that everyone will know that there is a God in heaven. That makes giants fall and surrender before a young boy. So that we know it is not the strength of a big man, but it's the strength of a big God. Yeah. All people will know. Friends, we have been called so that all men will see the glory. All men will know. At your workplace, God positioned you so that you show forth the glory of the Lord. Let's read the last scripture we hadn't read. Did we read First Kings, Edna? 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23, as we go. You are going to notice that everything that we are reading about, it is for the purpose of achieving the purpose of God. Okay? So God sends a certain people on a mission to reveal himself. And you are one of those that God has called us, called to himself. Go ahead and read. Can you see that? That all peoples of the earth will know you and fear your name. That's the primary purpose. Go ahead. As do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. Thank you very much. So God says Israel knows you, but all the people should know you as Israel knows God. Amen, church. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10 tells us... God. Ephesians 3, 10, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might... So be God, God is intentional. To what intent? Mm. To the intent that yes. now the manifold wisdom of God might be known by the church to the principalities and powers 
in the heavenly places. Even, even the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, God has called the church to the intent that through the church, the principalities would know. Even demons yeah, yeah. through the church, they will know that there is a presence of a group of people mm. that are gathered. Praise God. Amen. So those whom God sends are often called missionaries because they are the sending of God. So when Pastor Nigel is in Leicester, he is our missionary in Leicester. Those whom God sends are often called missionaries. And this word means the sent ones. So he called you in order to send you. He called you in order to send you. And he's sending you so that even principalities will know through you. So that worlds and lands will know that he is God. John chapter 20 verse 21, as my father has sent me, so I send you. Did you know that you are called and you are sent? Because there is this notion that pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, they are the cold ones. When actually all of us are the cold, cold out ones. Jesus says, as you have sent me, I sent these that have believed in me. Talk to him. Remind them that you are you are the cold one. Just remind them. You are the cold ones. You are cold. Now, there is a rapid multiplication of indigenous churches, planting churches that sweeps through a group of people or a population. Those are what we call church planting movements. And I pray that this house will be a church planting movement. Amen? Amen? Anyone that comes out of Kobe, we are planting the church where you are going. It's going to be a church planting movement. And I want us to know that we are not lifting living faith. We are lifting the kingdom of God. Our agenda has nothing to do with the name of the church. Our agenda is just understanding that we are the cold ones that are called too to do what to propagate, to make Jesus known, to make Jesus famous. Not living faith, not your apostle, not your prophet, not the pastors in the church, but that Jesus will be known throughout the lands. And I, I want to hear people that, that, that are convicted to, to know that this is my time. Where you just go out and you begin to do God's work. I hear the disciples one day saying, Lord, we met some guys that were preaching in your name and we stopped them. And Jesus says, you shouldn't have stopped them. They are for us. Yes. Where we hear that you, you have gone into a different neighborhood, you have started a, a cell group. The prophets are not going to call you and say, we hear that you are meeting in, in people's houses, you are gathering people. We will not hear about this in this church. As long as Christ is preached, even if you do it with the wrong motive, because there are others that are going to do it with the wrong motive. As long as Christ is preached. Because if you do it with the wrong motive, there is no reward for you in heaven. So you will say, I never knew you. But those that you preach to, they are in heaven. So we want to hear that Liga is doing something in a neighborhood, gathering people. We, we're going to be radical this time. Because we are the sent ones. We are the called out ones. We are not waiting for the pulpit in church. The church continues to grow and grow and grow. Very soon we are more than 500. We are more than 600. We are more than 1,000. So this pulpit is only 52 Sundays. If you are waiting to preach on a Sunday, there are only 52 Sundays. And it will be 1,000. Which means you might wait 10 years before you preach. <laughs> but if you know that I am the sent out one, I am gathering people. I'm discipling them wherever I am. It's not funny, right? Because 10 years you will not preach. <laughs> Praise God. 
So, church planting movements, they are a rapid multiplication of indigenous churches. Let's say indigenous churches. This church should be full of them, uh, British, Caucasian people more than you. We are not doing an African thing here. This is not an African church. We are the sent ones in order to disciple the British people. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, we have been called in order to season the British people. To come out of lukewarmness. Yes, to come into the real power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is you that is going to do it. Amen. You are the salt of the earth. If you don't mingle with them, how can you season? Yeah? How do you season? Is it you mix the ingredients together? And if you don't mix with the local people, how do you think you're going to season them? If you are not the same ones to go to them, how do you think they are going to be changed? So in this church, if we are radical about what we are doing, you are going to meet people that are going to come to this church and you don't understand them. Because we are going to season them. And some of you and me, probably we are going to judge them. <laughs> and they are thinking, I'm not going to go back to that church. The way she looked at me, I know she was judging me. I know he was judging me. But because we have been called to be those that are going to announce even to the principalities, we are going to love everyone that is going to come through the doors and change them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for it? So can you see the key words there uh, from David Garrison? The key words are rapid multiplication. Why? Because we don't have time anymore. It's got to be rapid. Elder Innocent, you cannot become free being an elder in the church without discipling some people. Where you can actually look back and see those that you have discipled and changed. Some of these people that are looking at me, they came from where they came from changed already. What work are you doing? You haven't changed them. <coughs> Indigenous churches, churches planting churches. That's very key. Churches planting churches. Living faith planting other living faith churches around. I don't want you to look down upon yourself. You are a powerhouse. That's untapped by yourself. Innocent with your wife, you are, you are going to be shocked if you do these things that I'm telling you. The miracles that will happen around you and people being transformed around you. And you're thinking, I thought it is for my pastor. Yeah. No, it's not for your pastor. Yeah. It's for you. Amen. It's not for the pastors. It's not for the bishops. Because the ordinary people in the first church were doing miracles. Church planting is critically important because, number one, it. Church planting does what? When you bring one sinner, you are saying, Lord, I see the work that you did on the cross. This one has to come to you because of what you did. You are honoring God by just bringing one. And the grace that we have, we are not going to bring one. We are going to bring many to glory. It spreads his fame amongst the nations. Let's go. And what are we trying to do so that Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy, according to Romans chapter 15, verse 9. So that Gentiles will glorify God. And by the word Gentiles, Gentiles was anyone who was not a Jew or anyone that did not know God. And when we lift Jesus, when we glorify Jesus, it will make the unbelievers glorify God. And unbelievers are going to glorify God through us. Through him, for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. That's Romans chapter 1 and verse number 5. And Psalm 96 verse 3, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds amongst the people. That's what we have been called to do. And the things that I'm teaching, I have to repeat them probably for many Sundays until everyone is wired when... Uh, you go to school, you know, I'm here, I'm the light. Yeah. 
I'm here to glorify God. You see, when you know that you have been placed in a particular territory, you know those that are in the, uh, maybe the secret services for a particular government, when they are placed in Poland or when they go to Russia, when they go to America, when they go to any country, they know why they are there. Except the church. We are his secret agents. Placed here so that people will see the glory of the Lord. So that they know that our kingdom and our king is powerful. That's the reason why we are here. Let's go. Let's go to five reasons for planting the church. Number one, to follow the biblical strategy. Number two, to evangelize effectively. Number three, to gather in the harvest. Do you know it's time for the harvest? I said, do you know it's time for the harvest? Yes. Do you believe it? Yes. It's time to harvest and to reach people groups until all the lands, all the earth will know about him and to fulfill the great commission. So what is church planting? It is the primary task of missions. All gifts and callings in the body of Christ must work together toward the planting of biblical churches. Let's say biblical churches. There are some churches that are not biblical. Not word-based. And you need to be careful uh, those that are not going to plant churches when you go to a different city and just go to any church, you need to measure every church against the word of God. Is it biblical that the pastor is doing? Even if it is your pastor that begins to do some things that are not biblical, run away. Because I don't own you. Are you following what I'm teaching? Yeah. We, we are looking for churches that are biblical. Churches that agree with the word of God. And that's what we are going to build. When you are sent by the church or God sends you, make sure that whatever you are building is biblical. Because whatever is not biblical will not stand. That's why Judas is mentioned in the word of God, not Judas Iscariot. But the apostles, uh, people like like Gamaliel would say, uh, there are people that came, people like Judas that was followed, men that came and preached, and many people followed them, but they are no more. If these apostles are people of God, leave them alone, because what is of God will stand. If anything that you are doing is going to stand, it is biblically based. Then it can stand the test of time. Although Satan will oppose any ministry that purposes to advance Christ's kingdom, his greatest disdain and most forceful attack is against those who would seek to establish a biblical church in the terrain which he has claimed. But thank God that no weapon formed against the church will ever prosper. I know that the next slide you might not be able to see it, but in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, thank you, Lem, uh, the Lord Jesus declared, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. So as we go and build the kingdom of God and plant churches, I want you to know that the enemy will fight back. Yeah. I want you to know that your image can be tarnished. Mm. And for some of you, rumors will go about mm. things that you have never done, places that you have never been to, people that you have never spent time with. Mm. You will be, it will be told that Liga is doing this or Innocent has done this, which is not true. And I know that some people will quickly believe things. But when you are doing the work of God, you are a target for assassination. You are a target for, uh, for, for, for being labeled. But we know that the Lord is building his church. The gates of hell will not prevail. When people attack you falsely because of what you are doing for God, just continue doing it. Are you following? So the text assures us that Christ is still at work in the world today, calling out a people for himself. This redeemed body is most completely manifested to the world through local fellowship or through local churches. It is our job as a local church to manifest the glory of the Lord. Let's go to the next one, Lemuela. Church planting involves an individual 
okay? It involves you as an individual, or it involves a mother church and or a group of people going out to start a church for the purpose of engaging a community through the gospel proclamation and demonstration. So we are going to go out and demonstrate. So church planting grows in the soil of lostness. Where people are lost, that's an opportunity to grow the church. If you go where Christ has been preached, Paul says, I, I, I did not go to some particular places because I wanted to go where Christ had not been preached. Because I didn't want to build on anyone's foundation. So if you go into a neighborhood where Christ is not known, that's a very fatal ground for Christ to manifest. So let's go to the next one. Any movement of churches that's going to be serious about reaching the lost world is going to be involved in church planting. Church planting is essential to the growth of the kingdom. The mission of God is bigger than church planting, but it certainly includes church planting. If you want to change the world, and if you want to see God at work, plant church agents. If you want to see God move in your life and witness miracles. What you need to do is to do what I'm telling you. You will see the manifestation of God. I have seen God at work most times when we go to unchurched places. That's where miracles manifest even the more. Where the, the ground is hard, God demonstrates his power even the more. So I want to encourage you, if young people under the sound of my voice are going to see miracles, they're going to have to try what I'm telling them. You will see God at work, Lemuela. Don't wait until you are my age. Don't wait to do the work of God when you are about to retire. Okay? Start doing it now, you will see the power of God manifesting in your life. I'm privileged to have seen demons come out at a young age. At times when I was afraid. And then a demon manifests. Then I'm thinking, so if there are no elders here, does it mean I am the one that is anointed? Because you tried to do something. And for you, you are not trying because you are now doing it with knowledge. For me, it came through experiences. Not being taught Let's go to the next one and the next one. So the word principle, there are principles that I need to talk about. The principle, number one, when we are planting churches, it is called the word principle. Principles are laws, right? The principle, number one, is use the word. You have to be based on the word of God when you are building churches, when you are doing the work of God. Leaders correctly handle the word of God to keep church planting movements on track. Biblically, you use the word of God. Acts chapter 15, verse 1 to 11. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Those that read the word, uh, Acts chapter 15, who are we talking about? Is it the separation of Paul and Barnabas? <coughs> For the work that I've called them. Acts 15 verse 1. And a certain man came down from Jerusalem, from Judea, and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the circumcision of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small... So can you see the church was being built on commandments? not on grace, except you be circumcised. You cannot be born again until Paul and Barnabas came. The church is built on the word of God, not on people's opinions, not on traditions of men, not what we grew up hearing in church, because some of the things, statements that have emanated from the pulpit for years, they are not the word of God. They are traditions of men. And you can find a young man quoting what they have heard without verifying whether it is the word of God. Why don't you check out whether what I have quoted is scripture or not? Because you end up quoting it when it's not scripture, probably it's a song. 
And then you hear someone saying, the, the Bible says when it's a song. Then 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Biblically based church planting. All scripture is given by inspiration. All scripture. So in the church, we need to build the word of God, the church upon all scripture. Mm -hmm. Not just a segment of scripture that pleases us, but we need to teach the whole counsel of the word of God. So we need to teach about holiness. Say amen. amen. We need to teach about walking right according to the word of God. We need to teach about money, how to be a steward. We need to teach about parenting. We need to teach about marriage. We need to teach about loving your wife. We need to teach about everything that is in the word of God holistically. Mm. Then the church is built on a firm and sure foundation. That when you meet this family, they are reflecting the word of God. Meet another family, they are reflecting the word of God. Because we are teaching the whole counsel of the word of God. Until we all are like Christ. Amen. Remember they saw the disciples. And they saw that these people are uneducated. But hey, they look like they have been with Christ. That's what has to happen in any church. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's go to principle number two, Lemuela. So as we do it with the word of God, basing on the word of God, number two, the Holy Spirit guides and empowers the church planting movements. That's why we need to be so in love with the Holy Ghost. We can't do it without the Holy Ghost. You can't do it with your own power. We have to be soaked in the presence all the time, sensitive to the move of God, so that we know... This one, God is saying, talk to them about this one. And that one, God is saying, talk to them about this. And at times we are so prophetically sharp when we speak to people on the street. And you are, they are shocked. You know, when you hit the nail according to the direction of the spirit, you, they are convicted. How did you know? Because we are moving according to the spirit as we plant the work of God. Amen? But the motivation is the kingdom. Bringing people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. When our agenda is that God backs us. Because when it is our church, then God knows it's your ego. It's another Babel that you are trying to build. We don't want to build a tower of Babel. We want to build the kingdom of God. I said it's not a Babel. Living faith will, will be scattered if we try to build something that goes and, and competes with the glory of the Lord. We want to build the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. When we go into a territory, we preach Jesus Christ, we are bringing righteousness into that territory. We are bringing people out of sin. We are bringing people into peace with God. We are bringing people into joy unspeakable because we are speaking the kingdom of God. So the third principle is called the kingdom principle. So I said principle number one when we plant churches is the word. The word. Somebody shout the word. the word. So we are preaching the word. Right? Lizette, you are soaked in the word. You are reading the word. You are studying the word. So that when you go out, all that comes out of your mouth is the word. The church is built on the word. Number two principle, the Holy Spirit. We can't do without him. Without him, we are nothing. We can't do anything without the Spirit of God. He's the one that guides us. He's the one that leads us. Principle number three. The kingdom principle. We preach the kingdom. Jesus says, go and preach. Tell them the kingdom of God is at hand. Not the church is at hand. But the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, let's go to principle number four. Is the apostolic style leader principle. Go back to the apostles. Look at their style. The apostolic Leader principle. God uses apostolic style leadership by starting ministries and expressing godly influence among leaders in a region, catalyzing church planting movements. Look at how the apostles did it. Wherever they went, they were planting churches. Meet some women that are doing business by the river. And Lydia says, if we have found favor, come to my house. The church starts in Ephesus. The apostolic type of leadership. When you meet one person, the church has started. 
Don't wait for crowds to gather. You start with one person. That one person is connected to other, another person and to another person and the church has started. So in Boston, you need one person. Pastor David, you need one person in Boston. Once you get one person, you have taken over. Because that one person will connect you to the next one. Will connect you to the next one. So when we came to Kobe, we didn't know that Normalisa was going to be here. We didn't know that Carol was going to come from Newcastle and be here. We didn't know that David was going to come from Latvia and be here. But we obeyed what God brought us as an opportunity to come and preach the kingdom. We came for the funeral. And look at you, all of you are now sitting here because of the obedience of faith. So you, the, the, the apostolic style of a leadership is just one person, we are establishing the kingdom from that one person. We are not waiting for crowds. So if we send David to Manchester to plant a church, David, you just meet one person and the whole church is shouting, glory, the church has started in Manchester. How many people, two people, pastor, me and that one person? We know the kingdom of God has arrived in Manchester. So don't be afraid to do what we are telling you. This is the apostolic type of leadership principle of starting churches. Just one person, one leader, one group of people that you are going to meet, they will expand to the glory of the Lord. Let's go to principle number five. The principle number five is the love and trust principle. Love and trust. Leaders in a church planting movement, they grow in love, they grow in trust, and they grow in humility with others in the movement. Now, as Pastor Nigel is being used by God, miracles happening wherever he's preaching, he needs to walk in love, trust, and humility with others in the movement so that he doesn't think he is the only evangelist like Elijah. Lord, I am the only one that is doing your work. And God says, quiet, you are not the only one. I have thousands that have not bowed down to bow. Now, humility then will make you know that you are not the best church in Kobe. Amen? Amen? You are not the only church in Kobe. You are one of many that are doing what God has called them to do. So don't go about and say, oh, our church is the best church. No. We are just doing what God has mandated us to do. And whatever we do, we do it with all our hearts. Not trying to compete with others. 